All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Jamie Atkins Atkinson. He is a podcasting guru. Um, he's coming to us live from Boise right now. Um, I didn't even realize he was in the States because you're usually based in Singapore, right? I've, I've infiltrated the ClickFunnels headquarters. That's what's <laughs> happened. I snuck in undetected. Yeah. You know, it's the English are invading once again. But now I'm here. Yeah, usually oh, yeah. I'm all over the place. I was just in Korea before this. We were in Bali before that. We, we get around, you know. Yeah. But are you based in Singapore? We're not really based anywhere. You know, it's not very attractive to say that I'm technically a homeless person, but um, it really, <laughs> little if you nomad. think about it, yeah, we're, we're kind of yeah. like, um, you know, well, I'm I'm English. My girlfriend's American. We met in Thailand about a year and a half ago. And, oh, you know, wow. I, I uh, flew to the US and convinced her to quit her job. Well, she technically got <laughs> fired, but, you know, we figured it out anyway. And, uh, and yeah, we went on the road and decided to travel and figure stuff out. And, uh, you know, about six months ago, we finally found our niche in, in podcasting and it's been pretty pretty fun since then we've done some crazy cool stuff and really really enjoying the whole kind of journey you know very cool yeah such a cool thing to do too when you're young i'm assuming you're you guys are under 30 oh i was i was i was waiting for the <laughs> I, 12 maybe 13 you look you look no. about that age yeah no no, no yeah so i'm awesome. i'm 27 my girlfriend's 26 so yeah we've there still got go. we've still got some time left us in and traveling just yet which is cool <laughs> yeah that's awesome um so i'm not even sure i remember how i found you probably just through the click funnel circles and i saw that you were doing a lot with podcasting and getting some success so why don't you tell us a little bit about your your podcasting podcast yeah. profit lab i think is a um yeah yeah that's product. the product that yeah. we have and yeah. uh, i'm super i'm super happy to share actually because you know the the one funnel away challenge and, and all of the communities that kind of branch off it was really how i got started and, and i love everybody that's kind of involved in that so just for anybody that's listening you know um what we're kind of known for as a company as and as a brand is we're really known for helping people to launch top 200 podcasts and and we're also known for creating profitable cap podcasts pretty much from the get-go. You know, we've had a lot of people that came through our podcast profit lab and, you know, they launched the program and really within a couple of weeks, they're, you know, profitable, they're making money. And, and I'm not talking about like, oh, you covered the costs of like the $40 it costs to edit it. I mean, like a lot of our students were making $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. One of our guys in the first 30 days of launching his podcast, he generated nearly $30,000 worth of revenue into his what? agency, which was absolutely insane. And also, you know, got like 2,000 downloads, was a top 100 business podcast. Um, we had four or five people that got into the top 200. And what was really interesting, and, and this is what I say to a lot of people, is that when it comes to podcasting, you really want to do it in three phases. Like the first phase is all about authority and getting into the market and really getting that positioning where people are saying, oh, crap like this person knows what they're talking about the second phase is all about you know positioning your offer and monetizing the show straight away and we don't do that because of the fact that we you know necessarily need the money a lot of the time the reason we want to do that is so that it proves to you that podcasting is worth doing. You know, I see so many people and they get, you know, 10 or 12 or 100 episodes in. And if they're not making any money from it, they're like, man, this is taking time. This is taking energy. I feel exhausted. Like, I'm going to quit. And that sucks because the really, really amazing stuff that happens in podcasting happens in the second or the third year sometimes. It's like that un uh, unattainable thing if you can never actually get to that level. So what we try and teach people is how to one launch with a bang and like kick butt straight away out the gate, but then yeah. also how they make money from it straight away. And then what we do then in the third phase is all about scaling and growing. And we show people how they can leverage other people's podcasts and how they can leverage their own guests mm -hmm. to massively increase their audience. Because a lot of people, and Heidi, if I'm honest with you, a lot of people do this wrong. Mm -hmm. They think the way to promote a podcast is to go onto Instagram, is to go onto Facebook, and it's to write an email to their existing audience. That's right. good, but your audience, unless your audience is growing, is only a certain size. So all you're doing is you're fishing in that pond, which is the same size pond all the time. So you might pull out yeah. some different fish, but really the podcast isn't going to grow with new listenership. Whereas what we encourage people to do is to go find other people's ponds and like have a bunch of different rods going. So you're pulling in people from all different angles and all different directions. And, and that's kind of what we're all about with the, with the podcast profit lab. Awesome. So do you recommend that people do things like 
try to get on podcasts that are just like one level above theirs and maybe do some sort of reciprocal thing where you interview them and then you get them to bring you on their show. You know, podcast podcast. swaps. Can, yeah, podcast swaps can be interesting because it could be mm -hmm. an easy in, and especially with a brand new show, that can be kind of beneficial. But honestly, most people when they go and try and get on other people's shows, they will contact like four people, maybe six people, and then yeah. nobody says yes, and they're like, "This doesn't work. This sucks. What's going <laughs> on? This, yeah, you know what I mean? Like they get really angry." And uh, the truth is, like you have to bulk it. You know, every Friday I'll go and I'll reach out to forty people, and that sounds like a lot, but you know, I get my VA to go make a list, and you know, she gets a list of all of the names of the shows. She gets a list of who the owner is of the show, and then she gives me the link of their Facebook profile, and then I'll go and hit that link. I'll go and send them a voice memo, you know, and it'll be something like, hey, what's up? This is Jamie Atkinson from the Entrepreneur Junkie Movement Podcast. I was checking out your stuff. I massively loved your most recent episode you did with, you know, Heidi. It was absolutely killer. One of my favorite parts about it was actually the part where you said X, Y, Z. I wanted to reach out and just say I'm a podcast expert and would love to come on your show. I can talk about all everything that you need to know about creating a podcast audience, but our unique spin is that we help people how to monetize it straight out the gate. Let me know if you'd be down if not don't worry i thought it would just be a great chance to connect but let me know and that is the script literally just bam bam 45 seconds of just hey um i've got a show so i've got authority uh, i really love this about you and this was something that i enjoyed from your most recent episode this is the value i can bring this is what makes me stand out by the way don't worry if you don't want to you give them an out you say hey it's okay if you don't want to i thought it would just be a good chance to connect and if you send 40 of those every week you'll get you're bound to get on people's shows right because people are always searching for guests right and so they need to keep the queue filled up and yeah and the fact that you have a content. show and the fact that you have a show yourself means that you're probably a pretty good podcaster in that you could be a good guest you know what it needs and and yeah honestly a lot of the time you'll get no's but a lot of the time you'll get yeses and the thing is you don't need a ton like if you send 40 of those a week and you get two back well two is fine like two a week is okay you know i've got an every day for me you know fridays is my interview day so I've got an interview now, I have an interview after this, and I have another interview after that. So it's just kind of like three hours in my day. And then at four o'clock today, that's my hour when I go and reach out to people. And, you know, and that's pretty much nice. how I plan out my Fridays. And in the morning, you know, I'll do um, some solo episodes. So it's kind of like, all right, this is my podcasting day. It's going to be some episodes for my show, some interviews for other people. And then I'm going to go and outreach and get onto other people's shows as well. And we keep that kind of cycle spinning and, and just try and have that process in place. So, you know, for us, a lot of what people need to do in podcasting, a lot of people just don't understand. They just don't know. And, and it's not their fault because nobody's ever told them, you know, this is the way that you should launch a show. A lot of people come right. through the OFA and, you know, and I love Russell and I think he's the best thing ever. But also the advice that he gives in OFA is a little limiting. Fair enough, right? It's not a podcast course. But, right. you know, they say jump on Anchor and, you know, publish every day. But, you know, the problem with that is there's no launch. There's no explanation of how this podcasting system works. Anchor, I don't really rate because they do everything for you. So most people don't even understand what's happening. And also yeah. everything is Anchor branded. So, you know, the biggest platform out there is iTunes. And iTunes has a system where you're able to get organic traffic. But most people that I speak to who are Anchor podcasts have no idea how it even works. And if they send yeah. anybody to a show, they send them to their Anchor page, not to their iTunes page, which is a mistake because, mm, you know, all it. of the traffic is running through iTunes. But, you know, I, I'm really empathetic because, you know, when I first got started in podcasting, I didn't have any idea. Like I had to go figure it out. I was like digging through blog posts and figuring it out and making mistakes. And, you know, I was speaking to one of my students last week and she's like, you know, what are you doing with your show? And I'm like, well, my show is like the crash course. Like when I, on Entrepreneur Junkie Movement, which is my podcast, like I'm trying stuff all the time. I'm like doing more episodes, doing less episodes, publishing it in different ways. Cause I just want to test and figure out what is working so that I can share that with my students so they can have a ton of success, you know? Absolutely. You got to lead by example. hundred percent. And you know, yeah. and I make the mistakes, you know, so that other people don't have to. Right. Um, so what would you tell someone, uh, as far as like how to monetize right out the gate? Cause I think a so, lot of people don't figure that out for a long time. 
Yeah, because I mean, the biggest thing is that most people think that the only way that you can monetize is through your audience. So what they do yeah. is they put call to actions in their stuff. They try and send people to a funnel. And really the problem with um, sending people to a funnel and with an audience is, is twofold. First, you don't have enough traffic. So, you know, if you're getting 50 listeners an episode and you're trying to do a call to action, well, you know, maybe... 5% of them will say yes, but what's 5% of, of 50 people? Like that's nothing, right? That's like one person. <laughs> so like, you know, you get one person that lands on your funnel page. And then the other mistake I see a lot of people make is that they don't have really a tested funnel. So they don't even right. know whether the funnel is going to convert anyway. So what we say is, okay, well, there's two ways you can monetize. You can monetize your audience or you can monetize your guests. And this is the thing that most people overlook. And what we teach people to do is, hey, if you have a B2B business, if you have a business where you're selling to other businesses, then you should build your show around attracting your perfect customer to want to be a guest on your show. So Heidi, like right now, if you, um, I, I mean, I don't really know what products you sell, but let's say for argument's sake, you sell Facebook group coaching, right? You know, you could bring people onto your Facebook group. You could do an interview like this between me and you, and you could ask me questions like, you know, well, where are you at right now in your business, Jamie? Well, I'm here and here and here. All right. Well, where do you want to go? Like, oh, I want to build an amazing movement. All right. Well, what are you doing to build that amazing movement? Well, I've got a podcast. I'm doing this. And like, oh, do you do you do anything with Facebook groups? Oh, you know, we've dabbled with Facebook groups. You know, well, what's the biggest thing that's been the challenge for you with Facebook groups? Well, you know, people don't really engage. Like I post something. Blah, blah, blah. OK, cool. And then you carry on the interview. And then all you do is like, once you find out all of that important information, that's, you know, where are you at right now? Where are you growing to? What's your opinion on this? What's your challenge when it comes to this? You've got all the information you need to make them an offer. And all you do is you then say, hey, let's go on a sales call and talk about it. And that kind of process is something that most people overlook. But if you design your show the right way so that you're attracting your perfect customers, both to be listeners, but both also to be guests on the show, you have an opportunity to basically have a consistent stream of customers that you can speak to as a lead generation platform and what we teach people inside the podcast profit lab is kind of the key and the secret on how you can position your show to attract those people to it all the time and you know it's kind of fun because a lot of the time what you don't realize is that you really start to learn a lot about your dream customers. You start to listen into these people. You start to understand, you know, what it is that they're talking about. You have a lot of fun with it and you really get, you really start to understand who your customer is and you understand what their pain points are and you understand the stories that they've been through. And, you know, just by power of association, you also, you know, um, are then associated with these people who are your customers anyway, because you've been interviewing them. So that's kind of how we do it. Right. I pretty much every podcast I listen to, there's either an offer in the intro or at the end, you know, kind of like, if you want to hear more about this, go to my funnel or whatever it is. So yeah, that seems like a pretty no brainer way to do it. But can you explain um, how people get hooked up with these sort of sponsored or sponsorships? And you tend to hear the same ones over and over like hello fresh Casper mattress. Like how does that whole yeah. thing work? Well, it's really simple. They have a big audience and advertisers want to get in front of it. And what yeah. you can do, you know, I have a lot of buddies in the podcasting and online space and, um, you know, and they'll go and reach out to companies that they're actually interested in. I have a friend, Travis Sherry. He is a travel guy. He runs a, a travel podcast and stuff like that. And he loves a brand called Tortuga. So he and they make backpacks and things like that. So he reached out to Tortuga and he's like, hey, what's up? I've got this audience of this many people that listen to my show every day. Would you like to sponsor me? And, you know, he's he's got them as a sponsor. And, you know, if people buy his backpack with his code, he gets a commission as well as them paying him for each episode. But personally, you know, I'm not really a big fan of sponsorships and, you know, with with, you know, ads on the on your um, podcast purely yeah. because they're really undercutting you on the value of what your show is. Like if think right. about it, if they're, if they're paying to advertise on your platform, they're obviously getting it at a cheaper rate, you know, cause they're trying to sell something themselves. So why don't you just sell your own thing? You know, why give it away to somebody else? And truthfully, like the value that you get from it is nothing. I mean, 
the average um, CPM, which is like how much you get per a thousand downloads for a podcast advertiser, is thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're wow. getting a thousand downloads on a podcast episode and you have an ad on there, your sponsor will pay you 30 bucks. I'm like, screw that. Like I've known people <laughs> who have podcasts that have 1500 downloads and they make 5,000, $6,000 from it, you know, pretty regularly because of the way that they set it up instead. So I'm personally not a huge fan of those types of advertising. Don't get me wrong. If you have a big show, then you have the opportunity to be sponsored and you know, you can maybe make a lot of money from it, but then like also at the same time, yeah, you know, and people yeah. who have those kind of audience networks, it's like the same thing as if you have like a million Instagram followers, right? Like you could flog other people's stuff, but re in reality, like if you sold your own products, you're going to make a lot more money and keep your audience being delivered with a high quality option, you know, and you listen to people like Alex Sharfin's podcast, Momentum, he's got a lot of listeners on his show, but he now monetizes through pushing people to his products on the episodes. And he can do that because he's got a big audience, but for people just starting out 99% of the time, your audience isn't big enough for you to be able to monetize them in the content you put out there. Now, don't get me wrong. Once you have more of an audience, once you start to grow up using the different techniques that we show people inside the lab, like once they start to grow and they start to get new subscribers, then you can start to put in that content, which breaks beliefs, all of the stuff that we talk about inside the OFA, figuring out what the false beliefs are, creating content around breaking those false beliefs. And then doing, you know, pretty much like a sideways webinar. It's like, all right, origin story, you know, the story of the belief one, the story of the second yeah. belief, the story of the third I belief. I love that right? you're tying this in with OFA. It's perfect. Well, it's, well, it's so important because like the <laughs> yeah. OFA teaches us all these principles and we don't realize that you can right. put them into everything. Like, did you know, for example, that people do webinars inside of their Instagram stories? Do you know that happens? happens all the time right because people people just do you know like russell says you can do a seven minute perfect webinar there's even a script inside funnel scripts which a lot of you guys will have apps access to go into yep. funnel scripts and go and get yourself the seven minute webinar break it up across some instagram stories right you know and maybe you don't do it all on one day maybe the first day is like okay this is going to be the origin section maybe the next day is going to be the next thing you know when you're doing a facebook live you can do a seven minute perfect webinar jamie um um who is you know the queen of soaps um i can't remember her right. name jamie cross the top of my head jamie cross there you yeah, go she we've been did talking about she her does too. Right, Jamie crossed those onto Facebook Lives and she does a seven minute perfect webinar. Now, the thing is like that will work as long as you have an audience. It's a traffic thing, right? It's like Russell says, you can have the best funnel and the best webinar, but if you haven't got people and eyeballs checking it out, you know, you're not gonna know it's gonna work. You know, we're inside of um, Two Comma Club X, which is Russell's coaching program. And all the time we look at, okay, is the funnel working? Well, what are the conversion levels? Like, it, is it just that you don't have enough traffic going through that you that you haven't been able to get a buyer yet? Because a lot yeah. of the time, it's like, oh, my funnel's not working, but you might have only had 100 people that hit it. So you don't know if it's going to work or not. You know, your funnel could be Very great. Like, you could have really good conversion levels. You just don't have enough traffic. So bringing it back to podcasting, you know, that's why I really encourage people in the early days, well, don't worry about monetizing your audience, build up trust, build up likability, you know, get them indoctrinated into you and your brand, you know, tell your own story from where you're going to where you're going to be. Like if you guys go and check out my podcast, you can hear the very first episode is why I think $30,000 worth of debt is a good idea because I was at Funnel Hacking Live and I signed up for the 2CCX program and I didn't have any freaking money. I didn't have nothing, right? And, and in the journey of my podcast, as you go through these episodes, you can literally hear the transformation I, that I went through and you hear the pain. Like if episode seven, I'm like, uh, you can hear the pain in my voice because I'm so uncomfortable yeah, because I'm like not making any money. Right. So, um, yeah. so that's, what's cool is with the podcast is you can take people through that journey and they feel like they're following along with you, which is super, super powerful, but you've just got to um, make sure that you're being smart about it. Like if you want to have a successful show, really you should try and make money from it so that you can pay to have a team, like pay for an editor, pay for someone to write your emails, pay for someone to promote to the other audience, you know, even putting ads behind it, whatever you can do to get that growth is really, really important. But most people, if they don't make any money from it, they don't deem it to be successful. So that's why we're all about that. Right. So I want to bring it back to the basics now. And, you know, this is maybe a hard question to answer, but who should start a podcast and who shouldn't? You know, I think people, 
spend a bunch of time during publishing week just beating their heads against a wall being like I, I don't know what to do I don't know what I can commit to and you know yeah. kind of like just jump in but you want to at least know what you're doing a little bit well this is this is a super important question to ask because a lot of the time people will say all right well everybody should publish and here's the truth everybody should publish right but yeah. you have to think logically about all right well what is the good step for my business so i always encourage people if you haven't figured out what your business is yet then maybe just diving in with any old podcast is not a great idea. What right. I do encourage people to do though is, okay, well maybe you haven't figured out your business, but you figured out your who. If you know who you're gonna serve, you know, and I speak to people all the time, they're like, I know that I wanna serve female entrepreneurs who are moms who are like busy and wanna like make money, but I just haven't figured out the product yet. Well guess what making a podcast and interviewing those people and having those conversations with them is probably going to be a really good way to figure out what the hell they need right it's like all yeah. right well what do you actually need let me ask you a question right and and you can figure it out from there and that actually works out pretty well so i would i would probably say that if you if you honestly have no idea what product or what industry or what person you're going to serve then a podcast is going to be a bad idea because you're going to be all over the place but if you at least have an idea of who you want to serve and then you can start to publish because publishing teaches you a lot on the journey like you figure out a lot about yourself you figure out a lot about who your audience is um, and you really get a lot better at finding out those hook stories and offers. Really, as long as you figured out your who, which everybody really inside the OFA should have done that by now, then it's going right. to be a good gig for you. You know, you go out there and you go and figure it out. That's that's a podcast is a good move for that kind of person. Got it. Yeah. And of course, it's someone who should be comfortable speaking for long periods of time and um, well, not necessarily. Like a lot of my yeah. podcasts when I first started, six minutes long. You know, I would get on there, I would write out an epiphany bridge script, and I would say, Well, what do I want people to understand by the end of this episode? Well, I want them to understand that um, you need to be able to um, identify who your who is for the podcast. All right, well, I'll do an episode about that, and, you know, I'll start off and I'll work backwards. All right, that's the result I want people to get what is the you know the wall that I hit then what is the epiphany I would have and then what's the story that ties into that and I work it out backwards and then I'll go through the epiphany bridge script on the episode six to ten minutes later all right guys see you on the next episode right it doesn't need to be a 20 minute monologue it can actually be short to the point and really valuable you know you don't have to go you know hardcore into it yeah I'm looking at some of your early topics right now it looks like you got people on to interview pretty early which is great um yeah how thirty thousand dollars worth of debt might actually be a good thing the birth of an entrepreneur how to overcome the fear of being boring yeah these really? sound like great one. topics yeah and i could see you interviewed doug botton because i recognized the <laughs> going from negative 444 in the bank yeah um, he was fun he was fun to interview yeah He's got his own thing he's promoting now. So we're going to have him in this group as well. But yeah, how do you come up with your content ideas? I think that's another one that intimidates people. They're like, how, how do I know if I'll have enough content? Tons of people get so stuck with content. They're like, oh my God, yeah. I have got no idea what to talk about. Or even worse, sometimes people go, I've got a ton of stories. And then they get behind the microphone. They're like, uh, 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 <laughs> they uh, up. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what to say, right? So um, yeah. actually what I what I kind of recognized was pretty early on, content is a real pain point for a lot of people. So um, we created um, something called Content Launch Secrets, which was uh, actually, it's a pretty cheap program. It's only $27. If, if somebody goes on my oh, cool. Facebook page, you can grab that copy. But what we teach people is how to figure out how to map out a 12 month content plan really in just a couple of hours and, and to break it down into its into its core understanding of what we teach in there what you do is you take your core values as a person and as a business so one of my core values as a podcaster is that i want to really create content which helps people take action so that's a really big right. core value of mine another core value yeah. is ambition right that's another thing that I, I i want to attract people who have that another core value is integrity okay so what you have is you have these kind of core values that make up who you are as a person and as a business and then what you do is once you've got those core values you start to create these macro topics from those core values which relate to your business so you know one of my macro topics might cool. be i want to talk about content right another macro 
topic I talk about is maybe understanding your audience. Another macro topic might be um, how to monetize a show, right? So you create these kind of 12 macro topics and those macro topics become your monthly topics for the show. So it's like, all right, in the month of January, I'm going to talk all about content. In the month of February, I'm going to talk all about monetizing. And then once you've got those macro topics for the 12 months, you start to break them down into micro topics. And a lot of people then get stuck. They're like, ah, oh, okay, I know I'm going to talk about hair care on, in January. And I know I'm going to talk about, you know, um, Facebook groups in February. And I know I'm going to talk about the audience and the who in, in you know, that in March forgot months then, <laughs> uh, you know, but then it's like, all right, well, what do I talk about? So what you do is you go and put, you know, those main topics into search engines, into Pinterest, into YouTube, into answer the public, all of these websites. And you look and you say, what are the questions that most people are asking? And then you figure out what those questions are with content. It's like, how do I, you know, figure out what content I do for my podcast? How do I, you know, break up my content and deliver it in a way that's easy to consume? How long should my content be? You know, what type of content does my audience engage with? When's the best time to post my content? You know, all of these questions that people have. And what you do is you use, again, the Epiphany Bridge script once you've got all of those micro pieces and you say, okay, what's the big lesson I want to give people? What's the epiphany moment? And then what's the story that ties it in? And then all of a sudden, within a couple of hours, you've got this huge plan of, all right, well, there's my 12 months worth of content. There's all the questions that people are asking in there. And then here's the epiphany and the realization I want people to have. And then here's the story that I'll tie back to it. And then boom, you've just created 12 months worth of content and you won't ever have to worry about what you talk about again. And that is a nutshell of what we go through. And it just yeah. makes it so easy. I'm a former um, content marketing person, so I love this idea. And for people who don't recognize it, answerthepublic.com is a great site. I often forget about it, but it's basically a, like a keyword topic search directory, right? I love the guy. Like you, you log into the website, and there's some old guy who's like looking at you, who's like <laughs> put an answer in already. You know, I, I love that guy. He's cool. You know, but yeah, yeah it's great because it with the search results it brings up is like a mind map. It's like you, instead of having like pages of results like Google, it will you know if you put in content marketing, it will see it will have these like spider webs coming off. So at a glance, you can really see all of these different topics that people are asking, and it's really useful to be able to see it in that you know different format to other search engines yes absolutely so that was great do you want to can we give an example maybe like let's let's use me as, as an example uh, like if I was gonna do a podcast around copywriting because I'm a okay. funnel copywriter so in November I'm gonna do a month on um, like conversion copy how to okay. write copy that converts so we're saying, okay, well, what are the big questions that people have when it comes to copy that converts? Well, you know, one of the first topics is probably how do you write a good headline to attract people and what other elements of a headline? And guess what the story would be? It'd be like, okay, well, we're going to talk about hooks. And I was recently going through the OFA and Russell Brunson was telling me a story about when he was on a fishing ship uh, trip with Dean Graziosi, right? And you can retell someone else's story. Just tell Russell's story tell the epiphany he had. And then what you do is you say, and here's the lesson and how that applies to conversion copy, right? So that would be one episode you could just bang out straight from the bat. Um, you know, another thing that you could talk about is, well, what is it inside copy that grabs people's attention? Like, what is, what are you trying to do? So you can actually talk about the psychology of emotion, like what you're trying to do on an emotional level. And you can talk about the brain science. You can talk about, you know, the reptilian part of people's brain. You can talk about the limbic brain, which is the emotional part. And, you're, and you explain to people and you help them understand why people buy. Then, you know, another episode, you could go into storytelling, you know, how to tell a great story and what you're trying to tell in the story that evokes that emotion. You can call people back to the limbic episode. And then the final episode is you can put about how to close with the copy right you can talk about the final element of you know if you want to be a great closer and you want to close people down you have to make sure you know you're doing xyz again you can give a relevant story either by something that a great copywriter has talked about you can go and you know 
Glen Gary Ross mode and you know ABC always be closing and you know quote an old <laughs> movie or whatever you want to yeah. do but you could then so so that's four episodes right there if you've done one episode a week for the whole month and it takes people through that process. One of them is about hooks. The other one is about story. Guess what the third one's about? Offers. And then somewhere in the middle, it's about why that works. It's about understanding those kind of elements. Um, but actually, as a copywriter or as somebody who isn't a copywriter, they could listen to that and really understand through the stories about what you're trying to do in the messaging. And it's not about you want to try and write, you know, double spaced. You want to try and do this. You want to, you know write an intro that you know grabs xyz what you're doing is you're explaining the reasoning through story and then that person is then going to understand what they're trying to do and can then go and do that from there so that's probably what i would do in that situation but you might want to also go and do that research and figure out well what are the big questions because that's what i think is important but is that the questions that everybody else has? And that's why it's really important to go onto Pinterest, onto YouTube, onto Google, onto Answer the Public to actually search for these terms and try and find out what questions people are answering. One thing I really like about Google is that <clears throat> when you type a question in now, it, it will list other questions that other people have yeah. asked. And you can hit more questions and it's like Brilliant. related questions. So that's a really good place to go to go and figure out well, what other related questions could there be. And then you can create your content around that. So we're really in a really a luxurious position because you don't really have to come up with all these ideas yourself. I mean, obviously, I just came up with those ideas off the top of the head, but that's because I do this all the time. Right. That was masterful. For people who are stuck. Well, thank you. But for people <laughs> who are stuck and can't figure it out, like you don't have to figure it out. You can just go and find out, you know, you can go and watch a YouTube video. You can find out what somebody else has talked about it. If you watched a Russell Brinson, a Brunson marketing your car video, mm -hmm. you can quote the story he's used and just do a different spin on it. You know, Russell does this all the time in his content. You know, I was hanging out with Chet Holmes back in the 90s, and this is what he taught me, right? And he told me this story, right? Russell does it all the time. He shares other people's stories, and then he just relates it to how it has affected him. And that's the way that a lot of people do publishing. So don't be scared to have to come up with your own unique story. You can use other people's stories if you want to, and that's a really powerful way to do it. Yeah, I love the topic ideas you gave me. Now I'm like motivated to start a podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, you know, we can we can help you out. Come buy our crap and we'll we'll help you do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I've always been interested. It's just I know it's a time commitment, so I don't want to start that when I'm, you know, I have a lot of time dedicated to this Facebook group and yeah other publishing so and you know what Heidi it's so yeah. it's so and that's something that we see time and time again and it's you know I want to do one but I've got XYZ that I'm trying to do and a lot of it comes yeah. down to money and investment right it's like okay I'm actually going to focus on the things that are going to make me money first and then right. once I'm established I'll create a podcast and and that's really why what we want to show people is well you know actually in fact by doing a podcast, you're going to be able to not only make money and get you customers for your business, but also understand your customers on a deeper level, start to publish and tell these stories and get a lot better at creating these hook stories offers, which will then power up your business and help you through and through. And that's really what our messaging is all about. And what we want to try and show people is, look, there is a way that you can do this that's going to help you figure that out and bring you customers at the same time and build up your authority, which is also cool. You know, there was a story that Russell always talks about with Arsenio Hall, who was a guy, right, like back in the set in the 90s and the 2000s, yeah, who had I'm his own show. Remember. <laughs> right? and, and, and then he came on The Apprentice and, you know, he was trying to get, you know, going through his little Rolodex, trying to get people to do it. And he couldn't get anybody to answer his calls. And he was like, man, when I had a yeah. show, everybody answered my calls. And that's what Russell tells that story all the time. And it's really powerful because when you have your own platform and you have your own show, you know, Heidi, you've got the Facebook group, other people have podcasts, other people have YouTube channels, when you have your own show and you can invite people on and you're essentially hosting the party, then you're going to find you have a much easier time with getting connected with really powerful and influential people in the space. You know, it's like J.R. Rivas, one of my good buddies, he always tells the story of, um, of uh, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Hethman, right? The guy who is who had the Playboy mansion. Hey. I got his name wrong. And he, he was always the same. Like someone would say, hey, Heth, 
we want you to come to our party, right? And he'd be like, well, no, I'm not going to come to your party, but you can come to my party. And he would always host the party. And it was exactly the same principle again. If you are the person that's hosting the party, everybody comes to you. And that's the same thing with a podcast, with a Facebook group. You've got to be hosting the party and have your own show. Yeah, that's like a power move. <laughs> but 100%. more than that, it's just a good idea. So yeah, this is a great point. Um, I think people do get hung up on this. You know, they think they have to have all these things in place. They have to have the audience first. They have to have the authority first. But you can you kind of reverse engineer that, right, with a podcast or a Facebook group or even posting in the ClickFunnels official group, like giving value. That's how you build that following an audience. And then you bring people into your bubble and you can start, you know, making offers. Yeah, it's all about that and just giving value, you know, and if you uh, and if you understand that and you can start to be, OK, this is the thing that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start giving value around it. People will recognize you as an authority in no time at all. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your journey with your podcast. Like, did you was there anything you did that you would tell people not to do in the beginning? Oh, you know, a, a ton of stuff. You know, I, I, I launched the podcast and I didn't really have a big podcast launch plan, you know, and I just kind of threw episodes up there and, and didn't yeah. really have much uh, momentum. And we figured it out, you know, we, we did pretty well in the end. But the, the one of the biggest mistakes I made was not doing a proper podcast launch. And really, you should treat a podcast launch like you would treat a product launch. You know, you build up momentum, you get people excited, you're dropping hints about it all the time. And, you know, you release it with a big fanfare and with a big pressure launch. So that was a really important lesson that I learned um, kind of early on. And, and that's what I teach people inside of our program is look, you've got an opportunity to build up a lot of pressure and to be an instant hit. And um, the other thing that I would also say is, you know, make sure that when you're interviewing people, that you're um, interviewing people that's important for your business. You know, a lot right. of the time I would just interview people because they, you know, had something interesting to say or they wanted to do that. Instead, what you want to do is really figure out, okay, well, who am I trying to attract to my show? Who are my dream customers? And then you want to try and attract that person to be not only a listener, but also guests. And your dream customer, you know, it's going to be different because, you know, somebody that's listening to your show on the scale of one to 10 might be at like a one or a two as your dream customer and is just starting yeah. to figure it out. A guest that comes on your show might be at like the six level, like they figured it out. They've got momentum. They're doing all of those steps. But you want to make sure that you've got that consistency because what's going to happen then is that more of your dream customers are going to want to come on your show as guests because other people like them have done it. And also other people who follow them who are the same as them are also going to want to come and listen to your show as well. So what happens? then is you're attracting people who would be a good fit for your services or your products or your business just by the way that you set the podcast up which is super important so what does an ideal podcast launch look like so a typical podcast launch is going to be something which is um, leveraging everything they can to get as much exposure. So the three big things that you want to try and influence in a podcast launch is downloads, subscribers, and also ratings and reviews. But most people don't realize that a typical launch within iTunes is that they look at that only over a seven-day rolling window which means whatever download you got last week doesn't matter next week. So a lot of people say, you know, oh, I'm going to try and get reviews and I'm going to do it over a month and I'm going to try and get this momentum. But really what iTunes is looking at is they're saying, okay, who is bringing in new people to listen to our platform every single week? And the people that bring in the most new people are going to be highlighted and put into these top categories and have a lot of success. So what you want to yeah. do with your podcast launch is you want to leverage everything at your disposal. Who do you know that has influence that would be able to email their list, get them on for a day one launch interview, be the person that, you know, get them involved and get them promoting it to their audience. You know, try and make sure that your episodes are short and something that's going to be interesting for people to binge through. Like if we put this episode here out as one of our day one episodes, people are going to listen to most of it. Maybe some people won't get all the way through and it's going to be one download. But if we put seven or eight short episodes that were six or seven minutes in length, which was super punchy, a ton of value with a ton of different people, well, people are going to binge through that content. They're going to go from one to the other to the other. And instead of getting one download, you're going to get three, four, five, six, even eight downloads from the same person instead. So what you want to do is you want to use everything at your disposal to try and get as much exposure as you can. That's an awesome tip too that I don't think people would 
you know, logically think of uh, the short bingeable episodes. Um, mm -hmm. I think people tend to think, oh, I need to have a long hour long podcast that's really, you know, well planned and almost like a webinar or lecture. You know, people are busy. Um, people got stuff yeah. to do, you know, and, you know, if they're passively listening to a podcast while they're going out and doing their shopping, maybe they want to just listen to eight minutes while they're in the car, you know, in between yeah. the shopping trip. You know, that's that's how people like to consume content sometimes. That's me. And when I commuted, I would that's all I did was listen to podcasts. Um, mm. I had a long commute, so I could get through a whole one. But the shorter ones would be great now when I'm just listening when I run errands. Right. So, yeah, that's absolutely. Nice to have that punchy content, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I, we have a couple listeners. I don't know if anyone has any questions you want to ask Jamie. If not, I can keep asking my own questions. Or I don't know, are there any other topics that you want to cover about podcasting? I think we covered a lot because, you know, the yeah. big thing, and I think what's really important here is that you don't want to uh, overwhelm people with too many different things. My right. best advice to anybody that's listening to this is whatever it is that you just had as that epiphany moment, that's like <sighs> content is easier than I thought. Or, you know, oh, I yeah. should do a podcast. Like whatever that thought is, you know, write down an action. You know, what are you going to do to go and make that happen? And whether it's, you know, I'm going to go and try and figure out content from what Jamie just wrote, whether it's, you know, I'm going to try that and then I'm going to go and buy the $27 thing just to go and figure it out. Or whether it's like, you know what, I want to go all in on the podcast and I need help doing that. You know, I have people inside of our podcast group all the time who come in for that free help and support and they're able to figure it out and get a podcast out there. But, you know, as always is the case, the people that come through the program, they have the best launches because they're shortcutting the mistakes and they're, you know, fast tracking their success from doing it that way. So what I would really advise anybody is wherever you're at at this stage, you know, look at what you want to do and just write down one single action that you're going to take that you're going to actually go and implement. You know, one of my buddies, um, Austin Dixon, he's uh, the lead funnel builder for Steve Larson. And um, you guys know who Steve Larson is, right? He, he's pretty <laughs> oh, popular in the OFA. The right? Boom guy. Everybody yeah, boom, boom guy. right? Like, and, uh, so Austin is a great guy <laughs> yeah. when it comes to webinars. And very recently, he has a, a WhatsApp community. And he said to the guys in the community, he said, guys, I want you to do a challenge this morning. I want you to go and write out an email or a Facebook post or do something to go and make an offer go right and then nice. pretty much an hour later i was like hey austin here's the email i wrote um i took action um i went and told the story about how i first discovered how to create content and i put a link at the bottom to go buy my 27 dollar course and you know the next day we came back and it's like okay that email got 17 percent click-through rate we sold three people into the program from there and what happened was out of the 50 people inside the group me and one other guy were the only people that took action which is super normal, like 2% yeah. of people. And what Austin said was, look, this is the thing that sets people apart. The reason that Jamie and this guy are going to win is because I challenged them to do something and then they went and did it. They took action on it. And, you know, that email isn't going to make or break my business. You know, yeah, I made a hundred bucks from it, which was cool. But also at the same point, what I did was that I went and I communicated with my audience. I went and took action on something. And that's how I consume a lot of content. It's not just reading it and then not doing anything about it. It's read it, write down an action step, and then go and do the damn thing. Because if you do that properly, you're going to be able to find you get a lot more success. And it's just incremental steps. If every day you're taking one or two actions towards your goal, in 10 to 20 days time, you're going to have accomplished literally hundreds of these actions that are going to move you closer and you can do more in two weeks by taking two purposeful actions every day than most people will do in six months i love that i'm going to turn that into a quote and attribute it to you of course but that yeah. that's great it's a really um, good piece of advice that i got a while yeah. ago and it, and it really makes a big difference yeah and i think also people tend to overcomplicate offers i think it has to be something they take 30 days to plan like with within the one funnel way challenge and granted that's building a whole funnel around it but you can simply go to your email list or your facebook page and make an offer right there i did this through something called the organic launch equation like this is a content system that a couple of copywriters came up with um oscar calderon and david rosa would just want to give them credit but i did this at the end of may i needed some quick money i was offering um i'll build your funnel and write your copy for 1500 bucks i only had one person buy but that's, that's Dude, cheap. I made fifteen hundred in a week, <laughs> you right. know, with no ad spend. So, 
it doesn't have to be something hard and complicated. So I love this tip about just taking action and just make offers. Just, you know, package something up that you have you or just create something out. new. Yeah. yeah. And people don't realize they're like, well, nobody wants to buy my stuff. Well, are you publishing? Like, are you speaking to people? Are you giving value? Because if you do, then people are going to buy your stuff. Like I yeah. put out a lot of value on my personal Facebook page. You know, I don't have a ton of people who you would think like, maybe I have like 700 followers, but you know, I give value all the time. And then the other day I was like, Hey, um, I've got three spots opening up in my coaching program. Um, comment down below if you'd be interested. Got a hundred comments. And then of those a hundred comments, I probably got um, about 45 of them on the phone. And then we, we filled those 10 spots like that, like easy peasy, you know, not a problem because we give a ton of value. Now I can't drop one of those posts every day because like it's gonna you know overfill the market with this like oh this guy's just a money grabber right but right. when you post content consistently and you get your audience into your network when you do ask for something it's gonna take action and, and it's gonna work really really fast yeah when you're providing value every day and really helping people people want to give you money <laughs> like they want to get your offer because they like know and trust you right yeah it's um, a huge thing yeah and steve larson talks about this a lot too how like it's your duty almost to make offers because if you're not, then you're not potentially offering your audience um, a solution to their pain. Right. Exactly. You know, and sometimes you don't know what the offer is going to be. So guess what? You just got to make it and see if people buy. And like, if they vote yeah. with their wallets, you know, you got a good one. And if they don't, well, there you go. That's back to the drawing board. Exactly. And you could also pre-sell an offer. So that's a great way to see if people actually want the thing and then go we and yeah, create it. We we pre-sold our whole course, the the beta course for the Podcast Profit Lab. We pre-sold it at nine nine seven. You know, honestly, like we're wow. selling it right now at nine nine seven. We think we're going to put it up to two k because the value is there and people are loving it. But the truth is, like you can pre-sell something at full price as well. You just have to make sure that you stack the value with the offer. I see a lot of people, and it doesn't matter that we're taught the principles of don't decrease the price. They all will be like, "Hey, I'm going to launch my program for nine nine seven, but I'm doing my beta at two nine seven." Don't decrease the price, you decrease the value, <laughs> like increase the value of it, you know, and get people in that yeah. way instead. Yeah, great tip. This has all been so valuable. Thank you so much. Like speaking of giving value, Jamie just demonstrated that because I had no idea who's gonna drop so many value bombs in this um, interview. Um, and also, so your Facebook group is called Podcasting 101. Now, is that a free group that anyone can join or is it a yeah. paid group? Yeah, it's a free group. So if you guys want to go join in, you can go to joinpodcasting101.com or just search for podcasting 101 inside the Facebook search bar. And, you know, we're, we're happy to have people in there. You know, we've got a pretty awesome community of people. They engage all the time and they really care about, you know, everybody um, getting a lot out of it. So I'm super proud to be, you know, the, the host hosting the party with those people. But it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, I will definitely drop the link to your Facebook group in the comments. If anyone wants to learn more about podcasting, you can go to Jamie's group. And just thank you so much. This was no wonderful. Worries. This was a ton of fun. Thank you for having me on. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Bye.